It's been a long time since the last exploratory 3D Mario game, but Super Mario Odyssey is most certainly an exceptional follow-up. It's packed with interesting ideas, tight gameplay, and a great presentation. So yeah, it's fair to say that Nintendo has brought its A game. And this applies to the technology as well. Not only is this the first exploration-focused 3D Mario game in 15 years, it's also the first one to run at 60 frames per second, and on a portable console no less. Once you start playing though, it's clear that Mario Odyssey pushes the Switch hardware to its absolute limits to the point where sometimes you even catch a glimpse of the seams. But before we jump into the resolution and frame rate talk, let's look at some of the neat details I noticed while playing the game. Mario Odyssey is loaded with tiny features that don't necessarily stand out on their own, but when you combine everything together, you end up with something more refined and cohesive overall. Take something as simple as this. If you roll down a hill, the developers apply a dirt texture layer to Mario. But if you jump in a nearby pool of water, it washes right off. Not a big thing, but it's a nice touch. Or while strolling through the city, Mario is programmed to move his head and eyes to basically look at things placed around the world. It's another cool little detail that helps ground Mario in the environment. Or how about these fire hydrants? Toss your cap at them, they spout water, and now Mario is dripping wet. If you run around a little bit, he'll dry off. You can even block traffic in New Donk City if you choose, causing a backup of taxis. Also, if you set the controller down, Mario falls asleep and dreams about pasta. Mario. And depending on which environment you're in, he also shivers when he's cold and sweats when he's hot. Again, they're just simple animations, but it's a nice touch. Another cool addition is found in his movement. Mario has real momentum this time. As you run up and down hills, he slows and speeds up accordingly. We really haven't seen anything quite like this in a 3D Mario game before, and it feels great. And when you run through the water, the effects are excellent. It almost feels like a callback to Mario Sunshine in some ways. Well, at least as far as looks are concerned, because this time, it's not just a surface effect. A deformable water mesh is used to create ripples as objects in Mario move through it. Now if we step back from this and look at the big picture, it becomes quickly apparent that there's a lot of variety in the game. From this prehistoric island, to a paradise built from sugar and sweets, or New Donk City itself, the amount of unique assets created for this game is really impressive. If Mario Sunshine was criticized for its repetitive island locations, Mario Odyssey goes far in the other direction. And that includes two dimensions. One of the coolest touches featured in Mario Odyssey is the integration of 2D Mario sections. At various points throughout the game, Mario can basically jump into a wall texture and appear as classic Super Mario Bros. Mario. It's just a shame you can't use the D-pad for these segments. But delivering all these beautiful environments and smooth animations comes at a price. In the case of Mario Odyssey then, just what is the price of 60 frames per second? Well, for starters, there's animation at a distance. In some of the busier scenes with a lot of characters on screen, and sometimes even not, we see animation update at a lower rate. At close range, it's a full 60 frames per second on these NPCs, but back up a little and they drop to 30 FPS, step back even further and it cuts down to 20. Now it's not a huge problem since this is primarily limited to select areas like New Donk City, but it's a familiar performance saving technique. And along those same lines, as I pointed out in the original E3 demo, distant characters in the city are all rendered as 2D sprites. The game swaps in 3D models as you get closer. Then there's the resolution, and here's where things get a little interesting. When the game was first revealed, all footage was displayed at a native 720p. This continued up into E3, where the demo version was also 720p. Then, not so long ago, we had a chance to sample an updated demo, and we're thrilled to discover that the game was hitting 900p instead. In its final iteration, however, the situation isn't quite as cut and dried as it first appeared. To put it simply, Mario Odyssey uses two different display modes in handheld and docked mode. When docked, we're looking at a dynamic resolution system, something Nintendo has been dabbling in for years now, but Odyssey is more flexible than usual. Essentially, depending on what's happening on screen, Odyssey can range from the top end of 1600x900 to lower resolutions like 1440x810 and 1280x720. Now, it doesn't drop all the way to 720p too often, but 810p is extremely common, especially in these busy areas. Then there's this. In certain scenes when turning the camera, an effect is used that looks like a low resolution depth of field blur. The low res buffer is effectively operating at quarter resolution. 
If we rotate the camera then pause it, you can see what I'm talking about. Now it's likely that this was designed to accentuate camera motion since it only appears when you're quickly rotating the camera, but it's not impossible that we're looking at some sort of performance saving measure either. Still, the main issue with the effect is that it's quarter resolution of whatever the currently selected adaptive resolution is. When the game's at 900p it doesn't look bad, but when it drops to 720p things become rather chunky. In some ways it reminds us of the multi-res shading feature in Shadow Warrior 2 on the PC due to the way it only applies itself around certain portions of the screen. It's a strange choice either way. As an aside, Mario Odyssey makes judicious use of shadow maps across this world, but the Shadow Cascade reveals its limitations, especially when viewing it from a steep angle. Moving the camera up and down can highlight visible artifacts in the shadows, which appear not too far from the player. Shadow quality works well enough overall, but if you look closely, you're definitely going to see similar artifacts throughout the game. Portable mode, then, is even more interesting. When you stand still, the game presents a full 720p image, but the second you start moving, it becomes clear that the image isn't quite as stable as it should be. So after close examination, what we can deduce is that the game appears to be jittering two 640x720 frames together to form a whole. When standing still, the world around you is 720p for instance, but Mario himself still loses resolution because he's always moving, appearing chunkier than the rest of the world. This is what leads us to believe that it is not just an adaptive resolution. It also explains why the cutscenes presented themselves as 640x720 in the demo. They were always in motion. Beyond resolution, there are a few other minor differences between portable and docked mode that's worth checking out. For starters, shadow resolution is pared back even further from docked mode with softer, less defined shadows across the world in characters when playing in portable mode. It doesn't stick out too much when played on a smaller screen like this, but you can definitely see it if you look closely, especially with objects close to the camera. Bloom lighting also presents itself differently, possibly due to resolution differences. The effect is stronger in portable mode in scenes like this. While testing, we did not find any difference in the draw distance of the bloom effect, however. The color blending is slightly grainier, however. Then there are the slight level of detail tweaks made in portable mode. Scenery detail often pops in closer to the player than in docked mode. You can see it here on this building facade. The tweaks are, thankfully, rather minor for the most part and difficult to see on the Switch's 6-inch display, but it does demonstrate the tweaking necessary to hit 60 frames per second on a portable console. Then we come to performance, and this explains why Nintendo has been so aggressive in handling image quality. Mario Odyssey is designed to deliver a smooth, stable 60 frames per second experience at all times. And it gets there at nearly all times. Most of the stages and encounters play back without issue, offering exactly the type of fluidity you'd expect from a Nintendo game. And it does feel great to play. As I mentioned earlier, this is the first exploratory 3D Mario game to run at 60 frames per second. A pre-release demo of Mario Sunshine was shown at 60 frames per second, but that was still 30 in the end. But with Odyssey, the jump to 60 makes an enormous difference in terms of controller response and overall consistency of the experience. But unfortunately, it's not quite perfect. You will most certainly run across small pockets of slowdown in select circumstances such as this. In fact, just running through the level here kind of highlights what I'm talking about as we've seen a number of minor little dips happening. Dips which manifest basically as a small stutter. It happens most often in the busy environment of New Donk City, of course. In fact, it still slows down in the same spot as it did back at E3, so clearly Nintendo has been struggling here throughout development. Despite this, these are ultimately the worst case examples that I could find, and not something you're going to encounter on a regular basis. For all intents and purposes, or 99% of the time, Mario runs like butter in both docked and portable mode. It's very stable. Speaking of portable mode, we ran a quick frame rate test on the same demanding area in New Donk City and discovered that while it does drop in most of the same areas, it does run ever so slightly smoother overall. This is most likely the result of its low resolution trick, which we discussed earlier, which requires far fewer pixels to be rendered compared to the docked mode. Still, when it comes to actually playing the game, it's an effective solution. So looking back then, the price of 60 frames per second in this instance is crystal clear. In order to reach this frame rate consistently, the game relies on an adaptive resolution, some draw distance tricks when a lot of objects are on screen, 
a loss of animation frames at a distance, and more. Taken together then, the results are impressive overall, keeping in mind the limitations inherent to the Switch hardware of course. Mario Odyssey feels like one of the best uses of its available power, and it really pushes the system hard. It also continues Nintendo's 60 frames per second streak. Aside from Zelda, which runs at 30 FPS with occasional slowdown instead, every other game Nintendo has published on the Switch delivers 60 frames per second. It's a great trend that ensures that these games will stand the test of time in the long run. The last thing I want to mention regarding performance is the loading. Mario Odyssey does load fast, very fast. When first launching the game, in fact, you're greeted with a control description screen before jumping into the main menu. From there though, when you continue, you need only wait around 5 seconds for loading to complete and once you're in the game there's next to no waiting at all. Jumping onto the Odyssey and traveling to a new planet is quick with minimal waiting. There is one extra feature included this time as well, which we mentioned in our earlier preview, the photo mode. In Mario Odyssey, you can trigger the photo mode at any point by pressing down on the D-pad. From here, you can play around with the camera while selecting from a huge number of different filters, including three which simulate older Nintendo consoles like the Game Boy. Well, at least in terms of available colors. This mode is also interesting as it allows us to see the LOD system in action as we zoom in and out here. Object draw-in is the same between gameplay and photo mode for the most part, but we do and see enhanced level of detail, image quality, and improved distance shadows. The photo mode is just limited to 30 frames per second, however. All told, Mario Odyssey is another feather in Nintendo's cap then. It's one of the most inspired Mario games in years, and it runs like a dream. The resolution issues are lamentable, as a stable 900p would have been great here, but ultimately, the stability of the frame rate is most important. But that's all for now though. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.